travel experiences from around the world. I leave Sibiu behind and head west to get to Transalpina. Taking this route, I will cross the Carpathian Mountains, but this time to the south. Exiting the city, I get onto a highway, which is perhaps the best I have ridden on my journey so far. Nineteen kilometers later, I got off the highway and headed towards Saliste, a beautiful town of 2,800 residents with very unique architecture. After Saliste, the route is mountainous and green with one lane per direction and bad asphalt in most parts. However, I am still enjoying it. I pass through small villages like Rod and continue heading west. I arrive in Poyana Sibilui, a small town with low buildings where it looks like it's haunted and there's barely anyone around. From this point, I move southwest to reach Transalpina. The distance from Poyana is about 17 kilometers. I cross the village of Gina and I begin to descend the mountain. Eight kilometers down, I will reach Dobra and a half kilometer further, the Transalpina Junction. I turn left here to head south in order to cross the Carpathians. A magical journey of 120 kilometers, which I would describe as one of the most beautiful I've ever done in my life. Although it's sunny, the temperature is good, not too hot for riding. I ride with caution, as after Sibiu and the ordeal I had with the police, I am much more careful when overtaking. The truth is that I am not in a mood to ride fast. I go slow, as I want to enjoy the green and the smells of nature around me. Fifteen kilometers later, there is a dam where I stop to take a few shots. Continuing after the dam along Lake Taubistra, you will find a hotel which also has a restaurant if you want to eat something. The road to the south gets narrow and has many bends but riding it is fun. I'm so relaxed and I feel really good. Comparing now with how I felt yesterday afternoon when I arrived at Dea de Argas is like day and night. About 18 kilometers after Tau Bistra, I arrived at Lake La Culoasa, which is an artificial lake formed by a dam. I make a short stop here for a few pictures and to buy water from the canteen as I was thirsty. The landscape is beautiful with lots of greenery. Thank you. 
After a 10 minute stop, I continue my way south. The scenery remains the same for about half an hour. Later, I will ride a short section of dirt road, as a landslide created a problem and the road is under construction. The route so far was a really nice ride with good asphalt and in a spectacular setting with huge trees all around. But I must have jinxed it because there was road work that affected me a little bit. Fortunately, the length of it was not long. I continue ascending the mountain, and it's such a beautiful ride that I don't want it to end. My current plan is to get as far south as I can, where I'll spend the night. That's because tomorrow morning I want to start off early in order to get to Greece and reach Palios Padaleimonas to spend the night. About 20 kilometers after Lake La Culoasa, I reach Obarcia Lutrului, where I take a right at the Fort Taranka. Be careful here, because after half a kilometer, you have to turn left to continue on the Transalpina. There is a big sign that indicates the direction. From this point on starts the most beautiful part of my whole road trip. Beautiful alpine scenery and with a very good road. It's about to rain, but I don't care at all. I'm simply enjoying the moment. Here I meet a few motorcyclists from Poland and stop to take a few photos. The landscape is really enchanting, and I want to stop and take pictures all the time. Continuing up to the mountain, I will reach a plateau where I make another stop. Here there is a restaurant, souvenir shops, and canteens, all wooden and beautifully harmonized with the environment. The plastic you see is to protect their products from the rain. It's cold and I'm hungry, so it's an opportunity to try something that I don't know what it is, but I like it as I see the lady making it. The truth is that I would have loved to have tried this one dessert that this guy makes in the next canteen, but I had run out of Romanian money so I couldn't. I can only imagine how good it was. After about 25 minutes, I continue on my way again. The road unfolds on the ridge for several meters and then becomes downhill. The quality of the asphalt is excellent, the scenery is beautiful, and every kilometer of my ride was simply delightful. 
Transalpina, or the DN67C, crosses Mount Parang in the Carpathian Mountains, making it the highest paved road in Romania. It is said that the road was built by King Charles II and rebuilt during World War II by German troops. Locals call it the Road King. Rumors say that Nicolae Ceausescu, due to his narcissism, created Trasfagarasan just to surpass the Transalpina road. The highest point of Transalpina is located at Urdele Pass, where the altitude reaches 2,145 meters. However, this road is also closed during the winter. Transalpina, in my personal opinion, is, if not the best, one of the best roads I have been on. I would certainly love to ride it again sometime. But unfortunately, it's very far from Athens and a very long and sometimes unpleasant ride. Heading down the mountain, I see a village across the plateau. I like the area so much that I started thinking about staying there if I find a nice hotel. I finally decided not to deviate from my goal, which was to get as far south as I could. The village is called Ranka and is a newly built resort at an altitude of 1,600 meters on top of Mount Papusa. There are many hotels, restaurants, and shops, and its peak season is winter, as there are five ski slopes. Continuing my way, I pass another peak, where to my right I see a flock of wild horses grazing on the slope. A unique image that I had to stop and capture. Continue my descent, and after a few kilometers, trees begin to appear again. The part of Mount Parang that I crossed has an altitude of 2,519 meters, and it's one of the tallest in the country. A few kilometers down, it starts raining, and it will continue to rain until I reach the valley. Here, the unexpected happens, as this cow decided to walk on the road. from here was dull and cloudy. The landscape wasn't very interesting, but nevertheless I felt so fulfilled that it didn't bother me at all. I have decided to stay in Krajova, which I don't know anything about, but it is the only city that I'll encounter on my way. The road to Krajova is long, straight, and rather boring. <laughs> While approaching the city, I begin to feel disappointed with my choice, as from afar I see a strange smoke rising from chimneys. They are from power plants, and the scenery full of blackness is not very nice. Once again, I look at the map if there is any other option, but I don't find anything else around worthwhile. So I chose a hotel on my cell phone and headed towards it. In the end, this city was the biggest surprise of my journey. Having rested at the hotel for a few hours, I decided to walk to the city center to check it out. It was already dark and I wanted to eat something and drink a beer to relax. While heading to an area that the hotel receptionist suggested for restaurants, I saw very beautiful buildings around me with very unique architectural elements. Eventually, I came to a pedestrian street with charming cafes, restaurants, and bars where people were dancing in the street. And here I thought that I would be disappointed staying in Karayova. I ended up being really surprised at how good a time I had.
next morning, I wanted to reach Palios Padaleimonas in Greece. I had to travel 658 kilometers, crossing a small part of Romania, Bulgaria, and the vertical section of northern Greece. Google Maps says that it will take about 8.5 hours. When I left the city, I realized why. The road was narrow, with one lane per direction, and in many sections with bad asphalt. After a difficult ride, I arrive in Baquet, where I will turn right to head to the port where I will take the ferry to cross the Danube. The Danube is the Romanian-Bulgarian border. I was lucky as I arrived five minutes before the ferry left, so when they informed me at the gate, I rushed to buy my ticket so that I'd make it. The cost for a person and a motorcycle is 3 euros and the ferry leaves every 2 hours from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. If you are approaching from the opposite route, it begins and ends one hour later. If I remember correctly, it takes about 10 minutes to cross. For further information, visit tripment.net. Coming across, I pass customs and continue my way to Botovgrad in order to head to Sofia. The route to Botovgrad is not very interesting and has one lane per direction. It's also very hot, which made it even worse, especially when I ran into lots of traffic. Approaching the highway to Sofia, the route is familiar to me as I rode the other way five days ago. Like any other trip, this one was a very nice experience with many good times. A journey full of beautiful images, enjoyable riding at certain parts, but unfortunately with many uninteresting stretches, especially for us who live in the Greek capital. This is partly why I had been thinking about taking this trip for so many years before actually doing it. Fortunately for me, in 2015 I did it and I experienced the unique beauty of the Carpathian Mountains.